y'all welcome back to my channel my name is Danielle and I'm the owner of damn fancy creations and the drunk flamingo glitter if you guys are new to my channel I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted below in the description in case y'all want to check them out today's tutorial is another super fun Halloween drip tumbler but this time the drip is towards the bottom of the cup I had never seen one done like this before and I love how it turned out this vision kind of came to me and like I wanted a creepy cemetery on the top half of my tumbler but on the bottom half the skeletons are actually celebrating underground so it's like a big Halloween party the end result was even better than I was hoping, which is always a good thing. In this tutorial, we are going to cover everything that you see listed here. But as always, if you have a question about a material I use or a step that I did, please feel free to ask in the comment section and I will come back and answer them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, y'all, if you watch my tutorials, y'all know I love to pop the bottoms off of my tumblers. I like to get a metal putty knife, hammer it down in there with a hammer so it's wedged between the cap and the tumbler, and then it pops off really easily. The bottoms of Steel Magnolia tumblers all come off like this. I do have a discount code down below in case you guys want to try them out. Popping the cap off of the tumbler does not affect the integrity of the tumbler. It will still keep your drinks hot or cold. This is just a bottom cap. And now that we have our bottom cap popped off, I am going to take some electrical tape and we're going to tape off the bottom. This is strictly preference. Sometimes I tape mine off, sometimes I don't. It really just depends on what design I'm doing. A lot of times I tape off the bottoms if I remove the bottom cap just because when I go back to fill the interior cavities with glitter or bling or anything like that, I don't have to worry about the rim color matching the base of the glitter cavity color. Um, it just makes more sense to me to leave it stainless, but again, this is just personal preference. So once we get it taped off, I am going to go spray paint the base of my tumbler, and then we will be ready to glitter. So I just spray painted my tumbler a flat black by Rust-Oleum as well as a flat white by Rust-Oleum. I like to use flat or matte colors because they do dry a lot quicker. And I am going to use some of my glitter from the Drunk Flamingo. We are using Revolver, which is my fine black, Jack Frost Cocktail, which is a slate gray. I'm going to use a little bit of Mimosa and our white is Classic Martini. And if I do not use epoxy, my next favorite way to apply glitter is with Artistry's Glitter Glue. If you guys have not tried this, I definitely suggest it. It's one of my favorite colors. I do have their link and a discount code in the description below in case you guys have not tried them. This glitter glue is a million times better than Mod Podge. If y'all have watched my tutorials for a long time, y'all know I never use Mod Podge unless I absolutely have to. This glitter glue is very similar to the epoxy method in my opinion. We're just using an adhesive versus epoxy. The way that it smooths down onto the tumbler and stays tacky really helps get a good ombre. It helps get great coverage for your glitter. It is one of my favorite products to use. I don't necessarily apply it with any special brush. I just use a big soft brush that I got from Hobby Lobby and I just make sure that the entire surface is coated with the glitter glue and then go back and smooth everything out like I'm doing right now. And then we're going to start our ombre. So I'm going to be using my handy dandy tea strainer, which is pretty much what I use every time I do ombres. It just really helps get that nice gradient from one color to the next. I am also angling 
my tumbler to help that glitter kind of cascade down the cup, which will also help with our ombre. I definitely should have gotten a larger sheet of paper to catch my glitter. These 32 ounce cups are so long, it's really hard to kind of keep everything on one little sheet of paper. So after we applied our black glitter, we are going to move in to our gray. And I'm going to angle the cup the opposite direction so that the gray glitter is falling in to the black glitter. And then I'm going to turn it back the opposite way so that the gray glitter can cascade down the tumbler. And this is kind of where you'll have to decide where exactly you want your skeleton part to start on your tumbler. My cemetery took up about three fourths of my cup and my skeletons took up about the last one fourth of the cup. If you want your Halloween scene more equal, then you may need to adjust where you apply your colors. Um, so right now I am just going back in with the black and we're sprinkling it down into the gray just to help a little bit more with the ombre. And I am doing one more time with the gray because I thought I sprinkled a little bit too much black. Sometimes I overthink it. So this color is Jack Frost Cocktail mixed in a little with Mimosa, which is my gold. And I just kind of wanted to break up the color a little bit so the gray didn't fade um, directly into the white. So we're doing gray and then a gray gold mix and then a little bit of plain gold and then that is going to fade into the white. So we're just sprinkling a little gold. And now we're going to grab Classic Martini. This is a sparkly white. There is no color shift to it. It is just a sparkly white. It's not pearl or matte. It is sparkly. It's one of my favorite glitters. This used to be my go-to when I would do one glittered ombre cups where I would spray paint my cups different colors and use this glitter on top of it because there's no shift in it. So once this glitter glue dries, I'm going to take it outside and spray it really good with Rust-Oleum two times clear. And once that dries, it will be ready for epoxy. So once the Rust-Oleum clear spray is completely dry, we are going to cover our tumbler in epoxy. I typically mix enough epoxy for a minimum of four cups, but I would say I probably use about 25 to 30 mils for a 32 ounce tumbler for the first coat because all of this glitter is going to soak that epoxy up and we wanna make sure that all of this glitter is covered really well. Once I get all of my epoxy on, I will smooth everything out from bottom to top, smoothing out any globs. We don't want clumps of epoxy in certain sections. This is also a great way to make sure that all of your glitter is covered then I will hit it with my torch. I will apply one more layer of epoxy and then we will be ready to sand and decal. So here is our tumbler after two layers of epoxy. I am not going to sand the white part of the tumbler because we are going to be applying water slide on that section. 
but the rest of it is going to get a good buffing. I am also angling my sanding sponge and sanding around this rim so that it reveals one to two millimeters of stainless so that when we apply our future coats of epoxy, everything's going to be sealed in. The top rim is going to be extra smooth And once my rim is sanded, we have a nice line around the top. I am just going to buff the rest of the tumbler. So once you get all of the little glitter grains sanded down, we are going to wash this with Dawn soap. Again, we are not sanding the white part because if you sand before you apply water slide, you will be able to see the lines and we don't want that. So now our tumbler is ready for decals and water slide. So here are all of the materials I'm going to be using. This is our tumbler. I printed out three different cemetery scenes. I used black, gray, and white. My black one is going to be the decal that is furthest back. I did make this the largest decal just so when it was layered, you would be able to see the buildings, the tombstones. I did measure out how long I needed to make this in order for it to fit around my cup. and we are just wrapping it around. I do allow for a little overhang just in case I was off a little bit on the measurements. One of my little crosses got a little crooked. And then we're going to peel up our transfer tape smooth everything down. So this is decal one. And when I was applying these decals, I realized that I should have added a little bit more depth to the ground part. So I just took some electrical tape. This is black. You're not going to be able to see the line difference under epoxy. And we're just going to cut it. That way the ground has a little more depth. So that when we layer our decals, you'll still be able to see a good bit of the black decal and the gray decal. So I am lining up my gray decal now. I'm kind of staggering it in between the other tombstones. And once you peel this off, just smooth everything down again. Any creases that you see, make sure they're all smooth. And this little landscape needed a little bit more depth as well. So I did cut another piece of gray vinyl and just attach it to the bottom. So that when we layered our white decal, you could still see all of the gray decals. And again, this was a last minute thought that I had. So right now I'm just cutting a piece of gray vinyl, the same color as the decal. And I'm just going to apply this to the bottom rim. The majority of this is going to be covered. Okay. 
I just wanted it here so that when we put our white on, if there are any bare spots, you won't see glitter through it. It will actually be the gray vinyl that looks just like the decal. And lost a bath there. All right, so now that our cemetery is layered on, we are going to put our moon on. This is just a circle. I just cut a circle out in the size that I wanted. I think I made this one about two, maybe two and a quarter inches. And I'm going to detail it with some alcohol inks. This is Mars Black and I think Fog by Bria Reese. The Mars Black is super dark, so be careful when you apply that. It's also very, very thick. I think I added a little bit too much when I was doing my moon. Even just like one drop is a lot. And I'll see how dark it is. Um, so we're just going to start with getting the ink onto our moon. And then we are going to go back with a sponge and 91% alcohol. And we're basically going to remove the majority of the ink. So I am wetting my sponge with alcohol and then I am removing the majority of the alcohol. You just need a tiny, tiny bit to get the alcohol to kind of react and spread like this. And I'm just kind of dabbing off some of the ink spots that are really, really thick. I don't want my moon this dark. So I am just dabbing a few spots and then I'm letting that dry and then I'm going back and dabbing a few more spots and then I let that dry. You can always wipe off spots that you don't like. Like this one, I really just wanted the craters kind of on the right side of the moon. So that's kind of where I was focusing my inks. And then I just went back and added a few more of the lighter color. And you can just kind of play with your moon until you get the craters that you like, the shade that you want. And once you're happy with your moon, we're going to move on to our skeletons. These are just some dancing skeletons that I found, I think, on Creative Fabrica or Etsy. I will link them in the description for you guys. And these little bats I know I got off of Creative Fabrica. So I'm just applying my bats first. And I'm applying a few to the opposite side.
We have tons of bats that fly around outside of our house. Our house backs up to woods. So we have all sorts of creatures out here. So I'm going to use my cup cradle and I'm going to cut out the decals that I want. I did measure these beforehand um, so I knew the size to make them so that they would fit in this little white glitter section. And I am cutting these out individually so I can just kind of space them how I want to. And once I get them cut out, you guys can see I just have like a little container of water. And I just kind of dip them into the water and then set them to the side. I don't leave them submerged. There's really no need for that. Um, I use Sunny Scopia Water Slide. It's the best that I found. It releases off the backing super quickly. I don't have a problem with tearing or anything like that. My water slide, I just spray it one really good time with Rust-Oleum two times, and I never have issues with it. So I am going to wet my tumbler, and once the skeletons start to release from the backing, you can slide them onto your tumbler. And I like to use a microfiber towel and just kind of push any of that water that may be trapped out from underneath the water slide. Make sure it's good and dry. Then I'm going to turn it and place our other little skeleton. And then our next little skeleton. And I'm going to do the same thing. We're just squeezing out any of that water. And I had a little bit more room, so I am going to cut out a few more of these skeletons. I think these dancing skeletons are hilarious. <laughs> I love skulls and skeletons, and when they dance, they just make me laugh. <laughs> So these other two I am just going to place now. And I am going to be doing drips next. So all of this will have to dry for quite a while. But if I was just epoxying right after water slide, I would typically wait about 30 minutes to an hour just to make sure everything is good and dry. So once that water slide has had a little time to dry, just because I don't want those images shifting, I am going to apply my drips. I am using Granite Shadow Dispersion Color and my Mother of Pearl White Mica. You can snag that on thedrunkflamingo.com. Dispersion colors are by CCDIY. They are an epoxy tinting pigment. Um, it really just takes a couple drops to get an opaque color and I'm just adding a little bit of my white shimmer mica just to give it a little bit of shimmer not really sparkly but I didn't want it to be a just a plain black so you guys can see it's a little shimmery so while that is sitting we are going to use painters tape and I'm going to apply this painter's tape right along the base of our vinyl. 
I am starting a little bit above where the vinyl ends just so I'm sure that the epoxy is going to cover this section and there won't be a line of glitter between the vinyl and epoxy drips. So now we're going to check our epoxy. I always like to test my epoxy on the side of my cups. And when it gets pretty thick, I know it's ready to apply. For my drips, I typically use Artistry's Fast Set. I will let it sit for about 20 minutes. And when it starts to get warm, then I know it's ready to apply to my cups. I will test it, but typically once it starts getting warm and hot, you can apply it to your tumbler. And I am just smoothing this along the painter's tape rim. And after we have that little epoxy band started, I just take little balls of epoxy and kind of apply it to where I want my drips to go. I will also look for where drips are already naturally forming. And I will just add a little ball of epoxy to help them drip a little bit further down. For this particular image, I didn't want my drips to fall all over my skeletons, so I kind of picked places that would fall in between the skeletons so that they weren't just completely covered with epoxy. So I will show you guys what it looks like. So here are our drips. I am going to go ahead and remove the painter's tape. just so that epoxy will smooth out where the epoxy meets the vinyl. We don't want like a epoxy shelf. We want it to be a smooth transition. And then we are just going to let it sit and let this dry. And once this epoxy has dried, we are going to cover the entire thing in a clear layer of epoxy. So for this tumbler, I am going to start at the top first. We're going to epoxy this top half. This is basically just like epoxying a regular tumbler. And then we'll get down to the drips. And when it comes to drips, I am very sparing with epoxy. I don't want epoxy to pull or gather in between where the drips are. So I just apply very minimal epoxy. And then you will also see me wipe in between each drip. This is just to make sure there are no huge clumps of epoxy here. It won't be full of bubbles. We're just wiping all of that excess away. And I will do this until I'm happy with the epoxy coverage. And then I'm wiping from middle to top to smooth out that top part of the tumbler. Make sure that has no globs of epoxy. And once you're happy with your epoxy application, we're going to grab our torch. 
and I typically torch for one rotation, which is about 14 seconds, just to make sure that the entire tumbler has gotten hit with the torch to pop all the bubbles that we can. And I will do one more layer of epoxy, and after that epoxy has cured, we are ready to do our glitter butt. Okay guys, so the glitter butt is going to be the very last thing we do. I am going to do this one two colors. I am first mixing up a little bit of Jack Frost cocktail, and we're going to fill the first smaller cavity with this color. I measured this out before and I believe that five mils will fill a 24 plump or 32 plump. And I'm just going to fill this until it gets to the rim of the second cavity. We don't want it to overflow into the larger cavity. These colors are going to be very similar, so it's not really a big deal. Y'all can see I got one little drip in there. And I'm going to mix a little bit of Revolver in with my gray, just to give it a little bit of color variation, but still in the same color family. It also matches the colors that are on our tumbler. And I'm just going to fill that center cavity just until it gets to the rim. So I will torch this. And once this epoxy cures, I will come back and add a layer of clear epoxy on top of this epoxy just to give us that nice, shiny, smooth feel as the rest of our tumbler. And once that glitter butt is cured, your tumbler will be complete. Here are some finished pictures of my tumbler. I just love how this turned out. I think it's the perfect amount of creepy but funny. <laughs> And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If y'all draw inspiration and make something similar, please be sure to post in my groups and tag me. I love to see what you guys come up with. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group or mentorship group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.